Hey everyone, my name is Brittany J. Jones and I am so excited to be stepping in for Mimi G. She's currently traveling on business and asked me to record the soul alongs for her new Summer Simplicity Patterns 8889 as well as 8890. In today's video, we're going to be following along with View A of Simplicity 8889. I hope to bring you that same Mimi G flair that we all know and love, so let's get started. Before we begin sewing, I want to go over the pattern pieces that we need to cut out to make view A of this pattern. I also want to direct your attention to the back of the pattern. If you are new to sewing, there's a list of suggested fabrics that you could purchase that would be great for this top as well as the bottom and the notions that you would need to purchase to make both. For fabric, I am going to be using this mustard linen that I purchased from my local Joann's. Now for the pattern pieces to cut out. We need to cut out pattern piece number one. This is our right front. We need to cut one of these. Pattern piece number two, this is our left front. We cut one of these as well. Pattern piece number three, this is our pocket and we cut one. Pattern piece number four, this is the back and we cut one on the fold. Pattern piece number five is the yoke back and we cut one on the fold. Pattern piece number six, this is the front facing. We cut two of these. Pattern piece number seven, this is the back facing. We cut one on the fold. Pattern piece number eight, this is the neckband. We cut two of fabric, one of interfacing. Pattern piece number nine is the collar. We cut two of the fabric and one of interfacing. Pattern piece number 10, this is our sleeve and we need two of these. And we also need to cut out 11, which is our buttonhole guide. We don't need to cut this out of fabric or interfacing. This is just the guide to place our buttonholes. Now, once you have all of your pattern pieces cut out and you've transferred all of your markings, we can start sewing. The first step for us to do is to do stay stitching along the neckline of our two front pieces. Stay stitching is done to prevent the curved edges from stretching out while we're constructing the garment. And we are going to be doing the stay stitching at a quarter of an inch seam allowance. I also wanted to show you that I did go ahead and fuse interfacing to both of the front pieces where it says the fold line for interfacing. If you look on the front pattern pieces, you will see fold line for interfacing. I interface that section because this will be where we apply buttons and buttonholes and you always want to stabilize that area. So now let's go ahead and do our stay stitching now. Once you have the stay stitching down, we can go ahead and sit our front pieces to the side and let's go ahead and grab our pocket. The first thing that we're going to do is fold in a quarter of an inch on the upper edge of the pocket and press that in place. So I have my iron right here. I'm going to go ahead and fold in a quarter of an inch. I always have my seam gauge close by so I know I am folding in accurately. Once you have that pressed and you want to turn it to the right side, fold along your fold line and I'm going to put a couple pins at the top. So now we're going to go to the sewing machine. You want to start at the top and stitch all the way down the sides, the lower edge and along the other side of the pocket at the 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. So let's go ahead and do that now. If you get down to the end of the pocket and you're unsure where to turn so that you stay on the seam line, just stitch all the way off and then you can start on the other side. I'll show you how to do that right quick. So now I'll just start on the lower edge following the seam line. That way I know that I am accurate and I'm not guessing on where I need to pivot and turn at. Okay, now we can go ahead and turn our pocket to the right side. Okay, so I've just finished sewing along the seam line of my pocket. I'm gonna go ahead and trim up here along the top of it to get some of that bulk out. So that's how much I've trimmed. I'm also gonna trim a little bit on that corner. Same thing for the other side. Now we can flip the pocket right side out and give it a good press. I have my point turner here I'm gonna to use to poke out the corners. And I'm just going to press along that stitching line that we just stitched. To 
do this corner here, I like to fold up right to the point, press it down just a little, and then fold the ends up. And that will give you a nice sharp point here on the corner. Okay, once you have it all pressed, we're gonna take it to the machine and we're going to top stitch right along this lower pressed edge. So make sure that you have your pocket facing up on your machine and we're gonna top stitch right along this edge here. Okay, now we can grab our pocket and we can go ahead and place it onto our left front. You should have transferred some markings here or mine here. I'm just gonna line my pocket up there with those grab my pins and I'm going to pin the pocket in place. Once you have the pocket pinned in place, go ahead and take it to the machine. We're going to stitch down the sides and the lower edge of our pocket. Let's go ahead and do that now. Go ahead and sew your pocket on the same way. Now that we have the pocket sewn on, we can go ahead and sit this left front to the side and grab our back piece. The next step is for us to make the pleat on our back piece. You should have transferred some markings or either notched where your pleat is, I notched where mine is. So the first pleat here is the solid line and I'm gonna take that and bring it over to the dotted line and I'm gonna pin that in place. And again, I'm working on the right side of my fabric. So this side right here is the outside, this is the inside. And so for this side, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna take the solid line and take it to the dotted line, creating that little pleat, pinning that in place. Now I'm gonna go ahead and baste across the top. Now that we have the pleat on the back done, we wanna go ahead and grab our yoke piece, piece number five, and before we sew it onto the back, we're gonna go ahead and do stay stitching around the neck edge of this as well at a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so I have the stay stitching done on my yoke piece and now I'm gonna put it right sides facing to the back piece. I'm gonna line up my notches, pin there first and then pin the remainder of the yoke in place. Now I'm gonna go ahead and sew this at a 5 eighth of an inch seam allowance and then finish off my edges with my serger. Okay, so I have my yoke sewn on and I've also finished off my seam and I pressed it going up toward the yoke. The next step for us to do is to stitch the front and back at the shoulder seams. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my front and backs, right sides facing. I'm gonna find my notches and pin in place. So now that I have a pin, I'm gonna go ahead and stitch these down at a 5 eighth of an inch seam allowance and finish them off with my serger. I'm gonna go ahead and finish off my edges with my serger now. So I have my shoulder seam sewn. I've already finished off the edges. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and press it toward the back. The next step for us to do is to go ahead and pin and sew our side seams together down to this large dot. If you are like me and you like to have your sides finished, I would recommend go ahead and finishing this side seam. You don't need to finish it all the way around because we do have a hem facing that we will sew on and we will stop sewing it up here at the large dot. But for this upper portion of the top, it will be raw on the inside of your garment. So if you want to finish that, you can go ahead and serge just a little bit, maybe 
past that large circle if you like um, or you can use pinky shears you can zigzag stitch whatever have you so go ahead and finish off this side seam now if you want it to be finished Okay, so you can see that I did go ahead and I just surged a little bit of my side seam. You can see here where I stopped. Again, like I said, we do have a hem facing that will cover this portion of the top. However, for this portion that's above that large dot, the seams will be raw. So I would recommend finishing those however way you like to finish off your seams. And now we can go ahead and match up our side seams, matching up our notches as well as the large circle. Pin there. I'm gonna pin at the large circle here that we transferred. I'm gonna pin the other side the same way and then sew it down, making sure that I stop and back stitch right here at the large circle. I'm gonna start down here at the large circle and sew up to the top of the side seam. So I have my side seam sewn and I've gone ahead and pressed those seams open flat. The next step for us to do is to go ahead and begin working on our right front. And so what we're gonna do is fold the front onto the outside along that folded edge for the interfacing. And we're gonna start at the folded edge here and stitch across to the stitching line and then pivot and stitch down the stitching line. Now I have my stitching line snipped right here so I know where I am sewing to and where I have to sew down. So if you don't have yours marked, definitely go back and transfer that marking. I'm gonna put a pin right here so I can see mine. So again, we're gonna start at the folded edge at the bottom. At a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance, we're gonna stitch across starting at the fold, going to the stitching line, and then we're gonna stitch down the stitching line. So let's go ahead and do that now. Once you have the lower edge of it stitched like so, we're gonna go ahead and clip it diagonally to the point. Be sure not to clip through the stitch and then I'm gonna trim this down as well. And now we can flip everything right side out and give it a good press. Now that we have it pressed, we can go ahead and baste it close to this inner raw edge. So let's go ahead to the machine and do that now. Once you have it basted down, the next step is for us to do our buttonholes. So go ahead and grab your buttonhole guide, which is piece 11, and we're gonna line the top up with the top of the shirt, and we're gonna have the line right on the edge of the fabric. I'm gonna go ahead and put a couple pins in mine to hold it in place. Now I'm gonna take my marking tool and I'm just gonna mark my buttonhole placements onto my top. If you don't want to mark it like this, you can always stick pins in. And then transfer the markings like that. Once you have your buttonhole markings transferred, we can go ahead and sew them onto our shirt. Because all of our machines are a little bit different, I do recommend pulling out your manual if you're not sure how to sew buttonholes onto your shirt. I'm gonna go ahead and show you how I sew mine on now. I have changed my presser foot to my buttonhole foot and I've also selected the buttonhole stitch on my machine. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and start sewing. My machine starts at the bottom and works its way up to the top. Again, like I said, make sure that you check with the manual for your machine if you're not sure how to put buttonholes on. Here 
Here's my first buttonhole. I'm gonna go ahead and sew the others on the same way. Once you have all your buttonhole markings made, you can go ahead and open them up. I have this little buttonhole uh, opening tool that I'm gonna use. If you don't have this, you can always use your seam ripper that works just the same. Once you have your buttonholes open, we can move on to the next step. Still working on the right front, our next step is to fold along the facing line. And I also clipped at the bottom as well as the top for my facing line. So I'm just going to fold along that. And now we're just gonna baste across this inner raw edge down here at the bottom. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pin that in place, take it to the machine and just baste across this raw edge. Once you have the inner press edge basted, now we can go ahead and start working on our left front. We're gonna fold to the inside along the fold line for the interfacing. Give that a good press and then we will base close to this inner raw edge. So let's go ahead and press this down now. Okay, let's go ahead and baste it close to this inner raw edge. So once you have the inner raw edge basted down, now we're gonna fold it to the outside along the facing line. So I'm just gonna fold it to the outside of the shirt along the facing line and I have my notched at the bottom where my facing line is. And now we're just gonna baste across the lower edge of it. Once you have the lower edge basted, we can go ahead and sit this to the side and start working on our facing pieces. So here are the facing pieces. This is piece six and this is piece seven. I'm gonna go ahead and pin them right sides facing, matching up the large circles as well as the notches. Once you have it pinned, we can go ahead and stitch the side seam starting at the top and ending at this large circle, making sure that you back stitch here. Once you have it sewn, go ahead and press your seams open and then we're gonna finish off the long unnotched edge. The unnotched edge is this inner edge of the facing. You can finish that off with a zigzag stitch, pick and shears, or your serger. Let's go ahead and do that now. Once you have the facing sewn and you've also finished off the unnotched long edge of it, now we can go ahead and pin it onto our shirt. So with right sides facing, make sure that you keep the plackets turned in, don't turn them out. And we are going to pin right sides facing. Find your notches and match those up. When you get to over here where the seam is, you want to pin up to the markings that you transfer. You should have transferred a large circle. We are going to pin there because we're gonna stitch there, back stitch, end our stitch, and then start sewing on the other side and then continue all the way around. So I'm gonna put a pin here so I know where I need to stop. Continue pinning your hem facing all the way around. 
Once you have the hem facing pinned in place, we're gonna go ahead and go to our machine. We're gonna stitch in a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. When we get right here to our large circles, we will sew up and stop, make sure that you back stitch, and then we will come to the other side and start sewing and go all the way around and do the same thing when we get over here. So we will come back stitch and stop at this circle. Then we will turn to the other side and begin sewing here and continue sewing the hem facing in place. Let's go ahead and do that now. When we're sewing our hem facing for the right front, you want to make sure that you do not catch in this folded edge right here on that placket. I'm going to turn over to this other side here. Make sure I have all my seam allowances going that way. I'm going to start right at this circle and then continue sewing the rest of my hem facing. Now that you have the hem facing sewn on, we wanna go ahead and trim our seam as well as clip into our curves. Before we start trimming though, just make sure that you did not sew this front placket into this seam. Now we can go ahead and trim it down and then clip the curves. Once you have trimmed the seam and also clipped into the curves, then we can go ahead and understitch the facing. I'm gonna go ahead and understitch my facing, making sure that I have my seam allowance facing toward the facing. Okay, now that we have the facing understitched, we can go ahead and turn it to the inside. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn everything in. I have my point turner right here. I'm gonna use that to get these corners out. Okay, so now we can turn our facings to the inside and give everything a good press. Once you have it all pressed, we can move on to the next step. Okay, so the next step for us to do is to go ahead and stitch the right front along the stitching line. So I have my notch up here at the top indicating where the stitching line is. And down here at the bottom where we stop stitching at, that is also the stitching line. So we're gonna stitch all the way down here on the right front. And on the left front, we will stitch along this inner pressed edge. All right, now that we have the stitching done on the right front placket as well as the left front, we stitched along the inner pressed edge. Now we're gonna fold this free edge here that has the button holes on it. We're gonna fold that toward the front edge of the shirt and give that a press. So I have my iron here. The front edge of the shirt, it should extend 1 8 of an inch. Now we're going to baste across the top. Once we have that basted, we're gonna grab our needle and thread and slip stitch this portion down here together. Let's go ahead and baste it in place first. Okay, I just basted it across the top. Now I have my needle and thread. I'm gonna go ahead and sew this together at the bottom.
Okay, so I just finished sewing the bottom of the facing and the placket together. The next step is to go ahead and pin our hem facing in place. And we're gonna put the pins on the right side of the fabric. So go ahead and grab your pins and we can pin them in place, pin the hem in place. Now that we have the hem band pinned all the way around, we can go ahead and top stitch it on the outside at an inch and a half seam allowance. If you would like a guide to follow while you're top stitching on the outside, feel free to grab your ruler and go ahead and mark out an inch and a half seam allowance. That way you can be accurate with your sewing or you can just follow the line that's on your needle plate. So let's go ahead and top stitch it in place now. <laughs> Once you have the hem facing sewn, we can go ahead and give everything a good press. Okay, so once you have your neck facing pressed, now we can move on to start working on our collar. So I'm just gonna slide the front to the side where I'm gonna keep it closed because we're gonna need it in just a moment. I have one of my neckband pieces here and I've applied interface into one of those. We're going to sew this neckband, the interfaced one, onto our shirt with right size facing. So we're gonna take the single notched edge we're gonna find our notches, line those up, and then pin in place. The small circles that you transfer, those match up for the shoulders. and your neckband, it should extend 3 8 of an inch from the front edge. If you need to clip into your neckline, you can clip, but do not go past the stay stitching. Once you have the neckband pinned in place, we can go ahead and stitch it at a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. <laughs> Okay, here I have the interface neckband sewn on in the 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Now I'm going to go ahead and trim that seam down just a little and then I will clip into the curves. Now we're going to go ahead and press the seam up toward the neckband. Now that we have the neckband seam pressed up, we can start working on the collar. All right, now working on piece nine, which is our collar, we should have cut out two of those as well as one interfacing. I've already interfaced one and now I have my collar pieces right sides facing. I'm going to go ahead and pin around the sides as well as the lower edge and the other side of the collar and then we're going to stitch it in a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. We can go ahead and stitch it now and be sure to leave the notch edge open. All right, I have the collar sewn in the 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Now I'm gonna go ahead and trim my seams.
Let's go ahead and do the understitching now as far as we can go. Now that we have it understitched, we can go ahead and turn it right side out. Grab your point turner to poke out that corner. Once you have the corners poked out on the collar, we can go ahead and give it a good press. Once it's pressed, we can go ahead and baste across this notched edge. Okay, once we have the collar basted across the notched edge, now we're gonna take our shirt and with right sides facing, we're gonna take the facing of the collar, which is the part that has the understitching on it. We're gonna make sure that that is right sides to the shirt. And we're gonna get our pins matching up our notches. We're gonna pin there first. And just continue pinning your collar to your neckband. Once you have it pinned, we can go ahead and baste it together. Now that we have our collar basted on, we can start working on our other neckband piece. So go ahead and grab your ironing board. Here's my other neckband piece. And on the single notched edge of the neckband, I'm going to press up 3 eighths of an inch. So I have my little seam gauge here. I'm gonna go ahead and press it up. Okay, once you have it pressed, let's move on to the next step. Taking the neckband that we just pressed up, we're gonna put it right sides facing over our collar. We're gonna match up our notches, pin there. And continue pinning the neckband in place. Once you have it pinned, we can go ahead and stitch all the way around in a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Once you have the neckband sewn onto the collar, we can go ahead and trim that down. I'm gonna flip the neckband to the inside and I'm gonna go ahead and press it down. Now that we have it pressed, we're gonna go ahead and pin it, placing our pins on the outside and making sure that the pressed edge is over the seam. Continue pinning the neckband in place. Once you have the neckband pinned along the outside, we can go ahead and stitch, making sure that we catch this inner pressed edge on the inside. So let's go ahead and stitch all the way around the neckband now. To sew the neckband down, I'm gonna start sewing in the center and work my way all the way around till I'm back to where I originally started at. Thank you. 
So once you have the neck band sewn down, you want to go ahead and give it a press. Now we can start working on the sleeves. Okay, for the sleeves, you want to go ahead and put two rows of e-stitching around the top of the sleeve. I've already done mine, and I've also gone ahead and I finished off the side seams for my sleeve. So now with right sides facing, I'm gonna go ahead and put my sleeves together. I'm gonna match up the notch. Pin in place. Do that for both sleeves, right sides facing. Now I can take it to the machine and we're gonna stitch in a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. Go ahead and sew the seam for your other sleeve the same way. Once you have the seam sewn, you wanna go ahead and press them open flat. Next, we can go ahead and press up our hem allowance. And for our sleeve, that is an inch and a quarter. So I'm gonna go ahead and press up an inch and a quarter. Now for the raw edge, we can fold in the quarter of an inch and press that all the way around as well. Once you have it pressed, go ahead and press the other sleeve hem the same way and then we can take it to the machine and stitch close to this inner pressed edge all the way around the hem. So let's go ahead and do the hems now. Go ahead and stitch your other hem the same way. Once the sleeve hem is sewn, we can go ahead and attach it to our shirt. So I'm going to make sure that you have the right sleeve for the right arm. So make sure that your notches line up. The double notches go for the back. The single notch is for the front. I'm going to start here at my side seams and line those up. Pin there and then pin the remainder of the sleeve in place and be sure to use your ease stitching to ease it up so that you can fit it into the sleeve cap. Pin your other sleeve the same way and then we can take it to the machine and stitch it down at a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. You can go ahead and sew your other sleeve in the same way and then finish off your raw edge. Once you have the sleeve sewn on, the last step for us to do is to sew on our buttons and then we'll be all done with our shirt. Well, that's all for the sew along. Thank you all so much for watching. I really do hope that you all enjoyed it. Until next time, blessings everyone. Bye.